What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in this video I wanted to talk about several different ways of creating different kinds of stairs in SketchUp. There's a lot of different methods and uh, different kinds of stairs you can create and I wanted to create a video that went through a few of them. So uh, before I get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a complete start to finish course that I put together to help people start using SketchUp fast. So um, I cover everything from the basic tools in SketchUp all the way through modeling for interior design and modeling for layout and I go through an introduction to photorealistic rendering as well. So if that's something you're interested in, you're looking for a little bit more in-depth SketchUp training, make sure you check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in this video we're going to talk about creating more straight staircases. So in the future I'm going to create another video about ways to create spiral staircases. But I'm going to focus on the straight staircases to keep this from getting super long. So method one is just for creating a simple rectangular stair and uh, this goes all the way back to uh, when Aiden Chopra was with SketchUp. Um, this is a method that he used to teach. This is called the subdivided rectangle method. So what you do is you draw a rectangle that's about the footprint of what your stair wants to be. So in this case I'm going to draw a rectangle that's 4 foot by 15 foot and hit the enter key. And then what we're going to do is we're going to divide this. So we're going to click on this line, we're going to right click. You're going to divide this into however many segments you want your stairs to have. So, and you can see this gives you a length. So in this case, let's say that your segments had, we'll call it 12 inch steps. So I'm just going to right click on this line. I'm going to go to divide and I'm going to move my mouse until this gives me 15 segments at one foot each. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the move tool in copy mode to copy this line. So tap the M key, or click on this line, tap the M key, then tap the control key to activate copy mode. Then I'll move my mouse right here, and then I'll type in times 14, and hit the enter key. That'll create 14 copies of this. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is let's say that this needs to go up nine feet. I'm gonna draw a nine foot line right here, and we'll just right click on this, and we'll just divide this line into 15 segments. So then we can just use the segments that are created in this line. When we divide this, you can just use your mouse to inference to those to create the rest of your steps. And make sure you're paying attention and that you're not missing any of these because you could throw off the way that your steps work. So then you can just come in and erase out these extra lines and this will leave you with stairs. So I'm not the biggest fan of this one just because it takes a lot of manual creation, but it definitely works. So now let's talk about the second method. So in the second method, what we would do is we would copy profiles of the steps. So instead of going through and push pulling them manually like this, what we would do instead is we would create a vertical rectangle that basically represents what our stairs would look like. So in this case, um, I would create something that basically represents how tall this set of stairs would be. And then what I could do, and let's just say these were going to be the same height, so I'll just copy these over, is you would basically draw lines for the profiles of your stairs. And then what you can do is you can use the move tool in copy mode to copy these up and across. So again, just select these two lines, tap the M key, tap the control key to activate copy mode, click on this point, to set your base, click on this point to set your final, and then you type in times 14 again. And you can see what that did is that copied this up and across 14 different times. So now you can just push pull this out by whatever you want your width to be, and you can see how you have an easy set of stairs. So, and you might have to come in here and draw over this to kind of heal this face. But you can see how that easily allowed you to create your set of stairs. And if you wanted to, you could definitely come in here and draw a line across this back side. And then push pull this so that it goes away. So you could definitely do that to create a set of stairs that doesn't that isn't solid all the way along the back like this is right here. 
So method three, instead of drawing all of your stairs at once, you can use components. And so in order to use components, what you would do is you would first draw one tread. So in this case, I'm gonna say this is four foot by one foot. So that'll give me my tread width, and then I'm gonna push pull it up so it has the same thickness as these stairs right here. Well, what we would do in this case is we would take this, we would right click on it, and we would click make component. And we would just call this something like stair tread component. And so then we would just use the move tool in copy mode to copy this right here. We type in times 14 and hit the enter key, and this would give you your same 14 sets of stairs. And so the nice thing about doing this this way is these are all components, meaning you can take this and you can adjust their thickness, and as you adjust one, they'll all change because they're all components. So that's one thing you can do with this. And then the other thing you could do with this is you could also draw handrails. So like for example, if I was to just draw a line up as kind of an example, like a three foot line up, you can see how I can add basically this railing piece in here on one side and because, because these are components, they show up in all the other components as well. And then you could come in here and you could use an extension like pipe along path if you wanted to or something else in order to create kind of a pipe handrail. Um, you could really do whatever you want with this. to create a very basic handrail. So building on top of this components method, you could also create an L-shaped stair using similar principles. So we could draw a four foot by one foot step. We'll give this the same thickness as this one over here, and you could make this a component. And in this case, we'll call this stair l shape step. And what you could do in this case is you could use the move tool in copy mode to create, let's say, six of your copies. And then you could take this last one because it's a component. You don't want to adjust this last one because all your other ones are going to change as well. What you could do is you could right click on this and you could click make unique or you could just draw this um, in manually. But what you could do is you could take this one and you could push pull it so that it's wider. So let's say we wanted a four foot step, we could push pull that one like that and then you could take this component and you could use the move tool in copy mode to copy it and then you could just rotate it. And you can just kind of put this in place and in this case I would move this up a little bit and then I would do the same thing for the rest of my components. So in this case I would type in times I think probably five maybe times six and hit the enter key. So you can see how you can use this same thing to come in here and create these steps. Now the only downside to this is if you were to try to do the handrail thing that we did in the last video, um, you'd run into some problems. You'd have to manually draw in the handrail right here going around this corner. So it's not really the end of the world, but uh, it is something to be aware of. The other thing you'd probably have to do is you'd have to it looks like because the way these are rotated, I'd probably have to flip them. So I would just use the scale tool or you could select them all, right click and do a flip along um, one of the axes. And this is one thing you might wanna make sure you get straight if you're gonna do a handrail before you create your second set of copies is just make sure that you come in here and you create these properly. So you could just kind of manually draw this corner rail in here, and then you could extrude your uh, handrail along your path. So that's how you could create an L-shaped stair. You could do something very similar with a U-shaped stair. So in this case, you could come in here, we'll do the same thing, four foot by one foot rectangle. We'll push pull it up. We'll make it a component. In this case, we'll call it stair step U-shape. We'll do times five to create our copy right here. Maybe we'll do times six just to keep these the same. And then what we would do in this case is we would right click and make this unique. 
then you do the same thing where you push pull this out and one trick that I would do in this case, because we're gonna want another landing, is I would use the push-pull tool in create new face mode. So I would activate the push-pull tool, and then I would tap the control key. When I tap the control key, instead of moving this existing face, you can see how this is gonna create a new face. And the reason I would do that is now I have this extra face over here that I could push-pull out another 48 inches. So you can see how I can use that to basically extrude a longer step over here. And then all I would have to do is just make another copy of this step over here. And then I could use the move tool in copy mode to create the rest of my steps. So you can see how creating this landing and this turnaround is really easy. And again, remember, all of these are components, so you can make some adjustments to the way that the thickness of these steps are as well. So again, you'd kind of have to go in and manually do a little bit with the handrail, but you could create a U-shaped step really easily. All right, so another way you can do this is you can use the extension Flowify to bend stairs around a rectangular shape. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off and I'm just gonna draw a flat plane so that I make sure that I draw these on the right, um, starting on the right height. But what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm going to draw a 30 foot by 12 foot rectangle. So 30 foot comma 12 foot. And so then I'm also going to come over here and I'm going to draw a 10 foot by 10 foot by 10 foot edge. And knowing these lengths is going to be important. Now you can erase out this extra stuff. Um, what you're going to do now is you're going to figure out what, how long you want your steps to be. So in this case, I've got a 30 foot, I've got a 30 foot length in here. So if I was to divide this into 30 segments, those should all be one foot long. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make this a group. And then I'm gonna take these lines right here and I'm gonna divide them into 10 segments each. So I'm just clicking on these, right clicking and clicking divide. And so now you can see these are all in here as, as basically one foot long segments. And so there's an extension that could probably do this, but in this case, I'm just gonna draw these up and I'm just gonna make copies of them real quick using the move tool in copy mode. So I created 10 copies there, 10 copies there, 10 copies there. And then I'm just gonna draw a line across the top to create my faces. And so you can see what I'm doing here is basically I'm creating the face along which my steps are gonna go. Whoops. But I'm also subdividing everything um, so that Flowify will work properly. So I'll show you what I'm doing in just a second. So for those of you that remember, Flowify is an extension that allows you to bend geometry. So in this case, what you can do and by the way, I'm going to link to another channel. Um, I'm going to link to the Tutorials Up channel. Um, they have a lot more detail on this method. So they're the first ones I've seen really do this method with this rectangular edge. I've done a video in the past about creating spiral staircases with Flowify, but in this case, uh, this one is the first one I've seen. This is a really good idea for bending things around a rectangular edge. But if you remember with Flowify, what you do is you basically take a rectangular shape and it'll bend geometry that's on this face around this shape and so what I've done is I've created um, a group with my flat canvas I've created a group with my target shape and I've created a group with my two edges leading to those points and so then I've put all three of those in a group and then once you do that you can use the extension flowify so you can go up to extensions flowify impose grid and what that's going to do is that's going to show you how it's going to subdivide this face so in this case i should have 30 edges in here and i've got a height of 12 feet so i'm going to do 12 feet or in this case 12 times 12 that's 144 inches and then we'll divide that by 30 so each one of my steps needs to go up 4.8 inches. So I'm gonna draw a 4.8 inch 
step up. And then I'm going to draw this across and we're just going to copy it up kind of like we did in the copy profile method earlier. And so I should be able to type in times 29. Yep, there we go. And copy this all the way across. And so then all I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude out my stairs. So we'll extrude these out four feet. And probably what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to draw from this point. You can see how I'm inferencing over to this point and we'll push pull away the extra so we have more of this like stairwell shape. And then we'll just triple click on this and we'll right click and we'll make it a group. So what that gives us is that gives us our Flowify group and that gives us our stair group. And you're just gonna do a shift click to select both of them. You're gonna go to extensions, Flowify, Flowify. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna bend this around this corner. And you can see how because we set each one of these up, everything looks really good except for these edges right here. And so for these edges right here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna come in here and I'm just gonna split this. And I'm actually gonna erase out this stuff around this corner. And I'm just gonna manually draw this in. And so in this case, to manually draw this in, I'm just gonna draw a rectangular shape. And you can see how I'm using inferencing in order to do this. And then I'm just gonna push pull this down to give it thickness. So the other thing you'll probably need to do is you'll need to come in here and you'll need to kind of fill in this geometry. You can see how that gets a little bit weird. If you really get hung up on it, you can come in here and you can make it line up exactly the way that you want it to line up. So in this case, I'd probably draw a straight line across here and then an edge across here and I'd erase out this extra. So that gives us this kind of uh, continuous stair shape. And so all you would do is you would do the same thing over here. So you could click out of all that and then you could just come in here and you could just hide your Flowify group. And you could come in here and you could draw some extra geometry in here, make this continue. You could kind of make it a little cleaner, but you can see how you can use that to bend steps along a face. And so then the last thing I wanna talk about in this video is you can also use extensions to create st stairs. So there's a lot of different extensions out there for stairs. So, so the free one that I'm aware of is 1001 Bit Tools. And I'll link to my video about 1001 Bit Tools down below, but that allows you to create multiple different um, kinds of staircases. So you can create like a metal timber, um, a dog leg, um, single flight staircase. It's also got spiral staircases in here. So like for example, if I wanted to create this metal timber, I would just click on it and it gives me a whole bunch of different options in here for how tall I want it to be, how thick the slabs are. So it's very detailed. Um, and then you just come in here and you just set your angle and then you click and it'll create your stair for you. So it's a little more geometry heavy, a little more detailed, but you can see how it's got these edges in here ready to go. So there's other extensions as well. I think GKWare has one. Um, they're the same guys that give you the, the cabinet maker extension, but that's a little bit more expensive. So you do have to pay for that one. I wanna say Valley Architects has one. I may have to go to their website. Yeah, so Valley Architects also has one. So their stuff is all subscription based, but it creates different kinds of stairs as well. So you can definitely get an extension that does this. I wanna say S4U may have that as well. Yeah, so I think S4U has one as well. I've never used this one, but that's also a paid extension. But if you don't wanna come in here and create the geometry yourself, there's a bunch of different options for for creating different kinds of steps using extensions. So I think this video is getting a little bit long. So I wanted to talk about a uh, spiral staircases as well. I think I'm just going to break that off into its own video, but leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you know about some of these methods? How have you been creating stairs in your SketchUp models? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.